Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. So far, we've only been talking about arteries. Well, that doesn't seem very fair, does it? Don't worry. Veins will have their day. And that day is today. In this sketch, we'll be covering one of the most common pathologies of the venous system, deep vein thromboses. Because they're so closely associated with pulmonary emboli, we'll be spending quite a bit of time covering PEs in this sketch as well. Settle in, because we're about to give the non-arteries what they deserve. Vive la revolution! It's June 5th, 1832, right at the start of what would be called the June Rebellion. General Lamarck, an outspoken critic of the French royal family, is dead. He was a popular figure among the supporters of the French Republic, often overheard telling hoity-toity French nobles to, quote, suck it, end quote. Well, on the day of his funeral, a few students diverted the procession toward a crowd gathering at the site of the Bastille that fell in 1879 during the French Revolution. The crowd suddenly broke into rebellion, exchanging gunfire with government troops. Barricades were erected throughout central Paris, like this one. A big, occlusive, smoldering metaphor for deep vein thrombosis. The pathogenesis of DVT is thought to involve a set of physiological conditions called Virchow's triad, embodied by this Virchow wheelchair cast into the barricade. Notice, too, that this chair has three wheels, representing the three risk factors comprising the triad. First is venous stasis which can happen while sitting on a super long plane flight or inpatient hospitalization or sitting on this rickety old wheelchair for extended periods. You get the picture. Think of heart failure as well, which can cause chronically reduced perfusion and venous stasis. Next in the triad is hypercoagulability, which is associated with OCP use, cancer, and pregnancy, just to name a few examples. These are all acquired risk factors, of course, Keep all those inherited hypercoagulable conditions in mind as well. Especially factor V Leiden mutation and prothrombin gene mutation, which are the most common. Last in the triad is endothelial injury. When the endothelium that lines vessels is damaged, either by surgery or smoking or even an atherosclerotic plaque, it becomes dysfunctional. And what was once a nice anticoagulant surface is now a procoagulant one. DVTs occur most commonly in the smaller, more distal veins of the legs, highlighted by the venous design on this young, idealistic Frenchman's pants. But outside of a little lower leg pain and swelling, these clots don't cause much trouble. Clinically significant DVTs most often form in the larger, more proximal veins, such as the popliteal, femoral, and iliac veins, which we've incorporated into Marius's rugged, yet fashionable, bourgeoisie jacket flaps. Why are these ones clinically significant? Well, take a look at those buttons flying off. These larger, more proximal veins are much more likely to throw off emboli. We'll get into why this is important in just a bit. Overall, a few less common areas for thrombi to occur include the hepatic veins or the dural sinuses. But don't worry your pretty little head about these for now. Portal vein thrombosis and cavernous sinus thrombosis will be covered in the GI and neuro units. All right. Back to DVTs. In acute DVT, patients can develop warmth, tenderness, and acute swelling of the affected leg, along with significant edema in severe cases. A larger calf diameter is actually one of the most useful findings. But here's the thing. None of these findings are that specific. Imagine you're in the office trying to rule out DVT, like awkwardly palpating around your patient's calf. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's kind of warm-ish. I mean, it's definitely not cold. Should probably take my glove off, though. Huh. My hands are kind of warm and sweaty, though. What if I'm just feeling my own hands? <laughs> 